end of time. Thirteen. O'clock. Well, hey, everybody. It's Wednesday once again. Yeah. And every time <laughs> every time before I push the button to do the intro, I'm like, here comes the baby hand. Because for some reason, that little baby hand like always like makes me laugh every single time. Yeah. Today's <laughs> going to be a uh, true crime show. And it is a Florida case, uh, yeah. South Florida to be specific, which um, I can't remember who it was that recommended it. But I had actually never heard about this case. Uh, happened in 2007. So I guess that's probably why, because most of the cases that I'm familiar with, I guess, are from researching my faceless villain books, and that only goes up to 2000. So I did start writing a volume four, but I only got up to 2002 on that before I ran out of time and couldn't finish it up, but you know what I mean. So yeah, so I ha actually had not uh, heard about these. But yeah, this is kind of interesting because it kind of reminds me of, you remember that, um, the Dan Bell... Uh, one that we watch all the time, that real fancy mall, like, down in Miami somewhere. Yeah, yeah. This I can't remember what the name of it is. I forgot to. It's not this, it's not this one, but this is, seems like a similar kind of yeah. mall. I don't think it's quite as fancy as that one, but it's, like, a pretty big mall, and it's in South Florida. Except in 2007, um, some pretty shitty stuff happened there, so you know what I mean. Camp Guy said it was on Unsolved Mysteries or one of those other shows. Yeah, I think it was on um, America's w Most Wanted uh, a few times. And uh, as far as I know to this day, um, there's not a huge amount of information about it. Um, I went to the Palm Beach County uh, Police website. That's where they had most of the information about it. But um, it is still unsolved. And they're not really sure if the case is... The two major cases, because there was, you know, more, there was more than two, but the two major ones, they're not sure if they were related or not. And also there's kind of um, maybe a tie in with a now deceased serial killer. Mm. Although I'm not really sure. I don't know. It does kind of sound like his MO, but not quite. You know what I'm saying? We'll see. So we'll get into that. And it's, I didn't want to get too much into it because we did already did a show about him a long time ago. But, you know, so there's that. So let's kind of just ease into the show got a couple of shout outs um xanada yep. sent us uh king, king of new york king of new york yeah got it uh, got, it, got, it, got it like the day after he saves it i sent it yeah it like as soon, yeah as soon as he sent it like yeah, yeah. We, Brand we new got it like the next day so that's really cool so thank you for that we're gonna be reviewing that sometimes we, we still gotta do breakfast club but you know what i mean yeah that's we've waited so long to do that one it's like uh, I feel we'll kind of bad. New York. We'll yeah, but we get to King of New York yeah. as well. And also, I think um, I thanked her on maybe Sunday's show, but I always like to thank people on the main show just in case people don't watch the other ones. Um, Celtic Angel seventy three sent us a big box of goodies, uh, including a Reagan. Oh, I have it right here still. Yeah. A Reagan Exorcist uh, Funko Pop, which is this is super cool, you guys. This face this just made me laugh yeah. like so hard when I opened it. Like her little eyes and her little restraints and stuff like that. So cute. She's got yeah. vomit all over her little nightgown. Yeah, we talk about the package in more detail. I think that was uh, the last live stream that we did. Yeah, I think it was on Sunday we talked Sunday, about yeah. it. Yeah. And um, she also sent she sent me a black Christmas t-shirt and him a shirt of the thing. The thing, John. Um, and thing. also a gift card to buy some stuff for Pookie in Beijing, which is much appreciated because they are out of treats. So I'll order some more treats. And she also sent us um, the entire Dexter. series. Not no, Dexter. not Dexter. Uh, Base, Base Motel. Base Motel. Yeah. The entire series of Base Motel. So I have actually been watching those uh, off and on. I watched one episode last night and then I got too tired. But you know what I mean? I think I'm at the end... I'm not sure if I'm at the end of season one. I'm sure I've watched the whole entire first set of discs, like the whole, the first box that has, I think, like three discs in it. I think I've watched all of those. So I don't know. I think that's 12 episodes, you know? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's where I'm at. I'm, I'm right at the part where, um, I don't want to spoil anything, but where the teacher got killed. <laughs> that's, that's where I was. So I think that's episode 12. Zach says, I was at the big mall down in Indianapolis last month for a date, and Lord, it was so depressing over there. Where? <laughs> in Indianapolis. Okay. I mean, some malls are still 
doing good, apparently. I mean, this mall that we're talking about today, despite all of the horrible shit that happened there back in 2007, is apparently still open and running. I don't know if it's at full capacity or not, but it still has five anchors, like department stores. It did have six. I think it had a Sears, but as far as I know, like the Sears closed in 2018, like a lot of Sears did. But it still has Macy's, it still has Bloomingdale's, it still has Neiman Marcus, Nordstrom, and Saks Fifth Avenue. And, you know, it still has, like, a Tesla dealer and, like, a Louis Vuitton and all that other kind of stuff in there. So I kind of feel like the ones that are higher end are probably doing a lot better. Because, like I said, if you if you watch Dan Bell's stuff, I can't remember the name of this fucking mall, but it's, like, a really, really fancy, like, open-air one. And it's one where, like, every single store is, like, super designer everything yeah forty thousand dollar watches sixty thousand dollar watches. right they got professional models walking around modeling clothing and stuff walking around inside the the mall itself because it's open air mall and it's all euro and everything's mostly foreigners in there uh you can smoke in there you know yeah which kind of blew my mind yeah you smoke i mean it's outdoor but the way they have it set up yeah like i guess even if you get a hurricane or something because you do i guess it still doesn't get the stores wet somehow yeah if you're rich enough to shop in there, you can smoke. Yeah, only poor like... people can't smoke. That's the thinking here. They're like, oh, yeah, you own this fucker. Come in, smoke all you want. Smoke up. You can't tell them what to do. You can't tell them what to do because they just have all the money. So yeah, they could probably just have you. Like, Cops. Oh, I own whole fucking police departments. Fuck out of here. They probably do. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so I kind of feel like this mall. Uh, Jeffy Art said I still go to the Boca Town Center Mall quite a few times. It's close to work. It's still pretty lively. Yeah, and I mean, the thing about it, even some of the, you know, um, malls around here that aren't as, I mean, there's a lot of dead malls around here, too, but the one that, the one that we used to go to, the Altamont Mall, I mean, that one was pretty decent. I mean, it was almost at full capacity. Like, yeah. there there weren't that many en- empty storefronts, and it was usually pretty crowded. Yeah, but there was a problem with it. Malls are supposed to be high-end, and that mall's low-end. Well, I mean, yeah. They're selling used stuff in there, used video games and collectibles. Well, a lot of malls are going And that. The, the anchors are fucking worn out and look like shit. And the only reason why there's a bunch of people in there is because it's got a decent food court. Yeah, it and has a massive food and court. And it's near a, a low-rent district with a, with a bunch of, uh, what do you call them, well, there's apartments. Like, well, there's like apartments. There's like Apartment, a, um, yeah. there's a really popular uh, park. Like, yeah. where there's, like, a lot of, like, kind of nice yeah. restaurants and stuff like that. So a lot of people walk around there. That's where they do the fireworks yeah. and stuff like that. Dan, I'll tell you that o- the only two ends of the spectrum still exist. Very high end or kind of ghetto. That, that's what exists. Because P- uh, high end people going there and buying Cartier watches and fucking buying a Lambo at the fucking mall. Uh, on the other end of the spectrum, they don't have ATM cards, I guess. Or they can't, they don't do online shopping. So they're kind of screwed they go in there and buy overpriced over-the-counter bullshit you know i guess they're they're not online shopping because there's there are no good deals in that mall if you look at what they're the prices of fucking what they it's just junk you can get off of amazon for fucking twice the price what amazon's selling it for i mean the crazy thing about it is that like i said we're kind of fascinated by dead mall videos (laughs) yeah um, you know, Dan Bell is like the best known, but there's like a bunch of other channels that do it too. And some of those malls, like there's literally like two stores still open in the shit. And it's yeah. like, why do they even bother? Like, I don't, well, how weird must it be to like work in there? Uh, well, the two stores that are open a lot of times are the, are the anchors and people access the anchor from the outside. They don't even go through the mall. So they just, you know what I mean? They come out of the damn uh, parking lot and go right into the anchor and then leave. They never go into the mall section. Uh, the sporting goods stores are like that. I kind of feel like most, yeah. and this is like kind of a joke in the dead mall community, but I kind of feel like the, <laughs> the mall is dead, but yet there's still uh, a GNC yeah. and a Bed Bath and Beyond. Yeah. <laughs> or not Bed Bath and Beyond, uh, Bath and Body Works. That's yeah. what there's always a Bath and Body Works. Yeah. It. It's because they're selling their own products. I guess, they make. and and, and they're maybe not they don't have anything. much. Yeah, there's they, no overhead. They must not have much overhead. Yeah, they, they and I think some of that shit is just still on the books because it's not running in the red, and it's just a big machine. GNC is just a big machine, but they say it's the last thing in a mall to die is a GNC. It's like a cockroach. Yeah, it, pretty much. It's hard much. to destroy it. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, they must have really low kill overheads it. because. But yeah, the mall that we go to, that's like, it's actually right across the parking lot from like the movie theater that we used to go to. Like it's all in one complex. Yeah. We go in there to eat. Mostly. Yeah. 
to eat, and then they had a little collectible shop you could get. Well, it was used, the FYE. The FYE, yeah. yeah, but they had used stuff in there too. Yeah, used movies and uh, vinyl, vinyl, t-shirts, Funko yeah. Pops. Yeah, the t-shirts were all new. But that was the only store that was interesting in there. The rest of it was just They had a junk. Barnes & Noble. They had a big Barnes & Noble yeah. that I like to go to. Yeah, that was nice, I guess. But the, I think the reason why the Barnes & Nobles did well is because it had a Starbucks in it. Most Barnes... I yeah. think all Barnes & Noble have Starbucks. Yeah. And then um, if, you, if you looked at the, mo- the movement in the mall, most of it was the food court. The food court was fucking packed. It, it was always food. busy. It had good food in it. I was sad that the Indian place closed, yeah. but they had a good like Mediterranean place. I used to go in there and get um, get sandwiches and stuff and like Greek yeah. salad. That clientele didn't know what Indian food was. They didn't, they weren't gonna eat that. I like hardly anybody was ever eating. And I yeah. used to actually kind of like going to Nature's Table too because like they had some decent sandwiches, but that closed too. But as I can't remember what all was in there. There's a there's a Taco Bell. There's a Mediterranean place. There's a Chinese place. That's where you usually eat at. There's yeah. a sub place or something there's a japanese place there's one of those philly cheesesteak deals yeah i think there's a chick-fil-a i can't remember what else is if, in you, there. if you're a gen x man you remember the malls the height of the mall culture that was when we were kids it was the height of the although it was strong for a long long time that's what you did when you were yeah a kid. You, you had, had to go shopping you had to, at the mall you had to go to the mall if you had to go shopping and it just replaced a downtown shopping district and it was air conditioned. It was kind of like being downtown, but it was air conditioned in there. So you kind of had this weird sense of being in something and out of, inside and outside at the same time, it's like something out of Logan's Run. Kind of an idealized fucking merchantile fucking experience with music and food. But it's just from a guy, bygone era, you know. It was uh, they were expensive. Um, they just can't survive in, 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 in the time, of, you know, in the era of fucking Amazon, online shopping. Well, yeah, I mean, nowadays yeah. you can get pretty much whatever you want, like, yeah, in, a much, day, in a day or two. Yeah, Amazon has a much better selection. Much better selection. You have to wait, but it doesn't matter. If you don't like it, you can just return it. And if you have Amazon yeah. Prime, you don't even, you only have to wait like a day. Yeah. <laughs> it's the future, motherfuckers, yeah. but yeah. yeah. I was never a big mall person. I mean, one, like, um... I was kind of like I I was I was more a thrift store person, um, but I would go to the mall on occasion. But it wasn't really my thing. I went to the mall in the day because they had arcades in there, like Aladdin's Castle. That was fun. Yeah, somebody was yeah. Camp guys talk about that. Talking about that, yeah. And always usually across from Aladdin Castle was the movie theaters. So you go to the movies and go to the arcades. Then they would have like a Chick Fil A in there, or and then they'd have something like a licorice pizza. Or a Tower Records or something, or not Tower Records. Uh, what was the other one? We had a Camelot in ours. Yeah, Camelot you, you music. could buy records. Yeah, records and tapes. This is before CDs, and CDs came out. And then we had a Record Town yeah. in there yeah. too in the '90s, and I worked there. Harmony like, House. That's while. what I was thinking of. Not Tower Records. Harmony House had that. So, uh, you know, for a teenager, there was a reason to go, and there was always girls there. Well, yeah, it was more a social thing. Yeah. Like I said, I couldn't afford to buy most shit in there. Right. Actually, the mall where I grew up, I grew up in Daytona Beach, um, Volusia Mall, which is still there and is still doing okay, I think. I haven't been there in a couple of years. But they have a Books A Million in there, um, which I go and hang out at because they also have a coffee shop. Um, But for a while, I don't know if it's still in there, but they had a really good... German restaurant called Mr. Dunderbox. It was like a German deli type of thing. It was tiny, tiny, tiny. Like there was really only one or two tables. You couldn't really eat in there. Yeah. But they had, um, you could buy like all kind of like meat and sauces and stuff like that. But then they made sandwiches and stuff like that too. And uh, then they also had like hot food. But yeah, it was like really, really good. I don't know if it's in there though because I I haven't been there in like a really long time. But I used to work there, like I said, I used to worked at Record Town, which I think got taken over and then became FYE, I think. I remember my whole life, even as a kid, the fucking clothes, the clothing selection at balls sucked ass. It did, yeah. It was the clothes that your that your parents wanted you to fucking wear. That shit fucking sucked. The, uh, the only thing that you might be halfway cool is that in the record stores you could get uh, uh, fucking like band t-shirts. They had band t-shirts and posters. 
think you could get those in other places too, but they mostly fucking suck. I remember fucking looking through there and going, like, man, where the fuck did, where, where's Billy Idol fucking buying his clothes? <laughs> so I was like, where the fuck, you know, where in the mall did they do, they like the punk rock? <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah. But, uh, then now I went you, back. Yeah, you do. I remember when I got a they, little they bit older. They were buying their clothes in there. Yeah, when I, when I got a little bit older, I fucking looked at fucking and that Billy Idol and he's wearing a fucking wetsuit top with the arms cut off of it. Like, that's a fucking wetsuit. You ever see yeah. that? Yeah. Like, look at some of the wet Well, you know, on. back in the day, you had to make your own yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah. Leather pants and fucking boots. I mean, there were stores yeah. if you had a big, if you were in a big city. But, yeah. well, and the thing about this, I know this is crazy, and I don't think it's there anymore, but when I was growing up in Daytona Beach, of all places, you wouldn't think it would have something like this because it's kind of, you know, rednecky. But we used to have this place, and it was in, like, the worst neighborhood, too. It was, like, right along where all the <laughs> prostitutes and crackheads were. But it was called Judy's Jazzy Boutique. And it was run by this hilarious, like, profane old lady and her daughter, whose name was Judy. And they sold, they had, like, a section in the back that was, like, all sex toys and porn. But then in the front, they had pretty much every kind of, like, punk rock clothes. They had wigs. They had stripper clothes. They had all kind of, like, cool-ass boots. Um, they had used stuff. They had new stuff. They had hippie clothes. They had, like, pretty much anything you could think of that was, like, alternative. They had all of that shit. Mm. That's where um, Jen from the Jenna Torture is used to. Every okay, time yeah. she was in town, she used to go there and shop. So I would always, like, save up and go and hang out there because the the two women that ran it were like super funny but um the, <laughs> they didn't even bother i don't know if they were you know independently wealthy or something like that but sometimes they didn't even bother opening the store like sometimes you would go and you'd think that it would be open and then they would just like not be there and yeah. then sometimes they'd come rolling in like at 5 30 yeah. and, and they're like oh yeah whatever we were just <laughs> yeah. probably wasn't busy all the time no it? it probably wasn't but they had like a lot of really cool shit in there so I got a lot of stuff in there, but I'm sure it's gone now because that woman I'm sure is long passed away because she was old as shit when I was going there back in the old days. Zach says, uh, you'll like this. I saw a video on fashion trends that are supposed to be popular this year. And one was like an elegant goth look. Guess that's been a lot of runways lately. Yeah. yeah I kind of feel like every few years we kind of get popular again. Like with the fashion designers, we thought that it, something was going to happen because of you know the Netflix series Wednesday, yeah, yeah. and I was like, oh, that means that like goth, uh, goth is going to come back around again. It did, kind of, yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a whole bunch of Wednesday Adams inspired fashion and, uh, and yeah, non, no, no. yeah, non goth girls are trying to get that look, and, you know. So it's like now I feel like I can't wear the, my little dress with the white collar anymore because everyone will think I'm trying to be Wednesday. I'm like, no, I just... thing is, there's millions millions of different interpretations of that dress. That's true. There's a lot of those. I'm just, I don't know. <clears throat> some of them don't have backs on them. There's all kinds of stuff that you can yeah. get. Some of them are two-piece. Some of them are one-piece. There's a lot of stuff that looks kind of like a Wednesday Adams-type dress. <laughs> Yeah, Zach said, oh, yeah, it actually was because of Wednesday, the lady said. Yeah, that's what I thought. We we thought that yeah. when we were watching the show. Every time a movie or something comes out. It, it, that's it, real it, it's popular. Like, yeah. Everybody's like, oh, yeah, they remember that we exist. And we're like, oh, It'll yeah. last for about two, three years. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll be lame again. No, it'll just be forgotten. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about Spencer's. Yeah, yeah, I think the mall in Daytona still has the Spencer's. I don't, I don't know if the Altamont Spring one does. Uh, Camp Guy said I always hit the bookstores. One mall had both a Walden Books and a B. Dalton. Yeah, the one that where I grew up had both of those. They were small, but I used to go in there too. But the one it has now, it has the big books a million. Like, it's kind of like an anchor. It was there last time I went there, but it's been like a year or two, I guess. But, uh, yeah, somebody... He also said Magic Pan Crepe Restaurant. Huh. Never heard of it. I've heard of it, but I don't think we have any around here. I would totally eat there, though, because I fucking love crepes, man. And I never, I used to make them, like, every now and then, but I haven't made any for a really long time. Danny Rowling also said eBay is just as good as Amazon. Yeah, sometimes I can find really good shit on eBay. I just, I usually forget to look, to be honest with you. Delivery yeah. isn't as fast. Yeah, that's true. I kind of feel like Amazon yeah. just kind of, like, took over the whole fucking world. Yeah. Well, just because they have warehouses everywhere. Yeah, they got their own delivery vehicles and shit. And you can just, like, yeah. you know, get stuff immediately. 
And then it also said Suncoast Video was the shit in the mall. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that being really cool. But yeah, it's, you know, it's just surprising that as many of them are dying out, I guess there are still a lot that are doing okay. You it know? depends on the location. Yeah. Location is everything. And like I said, it's it's the two ends of the spectrum. It's in a good location, but it's very low rent. Uh, or it's in a good location and it's fucking way out of your price range. Right. You know. Yeah, I can't afford $40,000 one. Yeah, go down there and get a fucking $15 espresso. You know, or a $20 fucking cup of coffee. It's priced to keep all the riffraff out. That better be some good fucking yeah. coffee. That's what I'm yeah. just saying. I better That, that better yeah. be orgasmically good. Yeah. <laughs> and if you look at videos of the place that we're talking about here in, in Miami, it's just foreigners. Americans don't go to that. Foreigners that live here. The damn bell one, I mean. Yeah, the, the one that I can't the one that I can't remember. That's what I said. Didn't yeah. I? The one in Miami the one in Miami. Yeah, yeah, one in Miami, yeah. Not the one that we're talking about today where the no, killings no. happen. No, the one on Dan Bell. Americans don't go in there, that's foreigners. Well the, our bitch asses don't have no money. Yeah, people from Saudi and shit and fucking uh, real rich Europeans. But I think it's mostly Middle Easterners. Zach said, my theater professor in college said she used to work at Spencer's Gifts. I always wanted to ask her if she sold the penis candles and lava lamps. Yeah. Well, it's funny because when I was growing up, like Spencer's, you know, that's where you went to get, like you said, lava lamps and blacklight posters and shit like that. They didn't have sex toys until later. They don't have like real hardcore sex no, toys. It's cheap shit. Like but they have, yeah, they have like vibrators and, yeah. you know, dildos and stuff like that, which they didn't have that when I was growing up. That was like a later edition. Actually, the back of the one in uh, Daytona, last time I was in there, it was all, like, Playboy stuff. You know what I mean? Oh, like, there's the, all brand. the branded mm. Playboy stuff, like, toys and pillows. and. That's all gone now, I think. I don't think there is a Playboy brand. You think the anyone, magazine's gone, I think. You think anyone used the candles as dildos? Oh, I'm sure. You know somebody stuck that up their ass and had to go to the ER and get it removed. <laughs> <laughs> Man, there was something. I, somebody... I think that was on Gore Gallery a long time ago. You guys probably don't remember Gore Gallery, but there was a whole section of X-rays from the hospital of things that people put put up their ass. Yeah. One of them was like a shampoo bottle. Yeah. Uh, like a fucking big ass fucking toy truck. <laughs> Just fucking crazy. Yeah. That's like not even shaped like, like it would old, go in your nah, mind. I'm not really a, a sure. Old toy truck. Like I could see something like like you said like a shampoo bottle or something yeah, like that, yeah. which which at least is approximates. Yeah kind of a shape of a butt yeah it looked like a, it looked like a like a <laughs> like a semi truck you know what i mean with the big old lawn somebody wanted all those sharp angles i guess yeah. he's driving He's driving the truck some, kinky, <laughs> some kinky ass fucking dude decided i want to put the truck on my head yeah. i wonder if the, i always wanted to know like what the Although they may have been a story behind it, you know, maybe the oh, I'm sure there was somebody shoved the fucking shoved it up his ass. You like, don't yeah, know. maybe it maybe it wasn't consensual. Yeah, you don't know. It's just that's just a that's I'm just, just X-ray. I'm had. just curious to know what the story was that he told the people at the hospital when he got there. Like he I just, slipped and fell. Uh, yeah, I just <laughs> fell on I it. I fell <laughs> and it went up my ass. I was in the shower and I fell. <laughs> And my kid had this toy truck, and he left it, like, standing right up like that. Like, he'll have this big elaborate. I was walking, okay? And, and my toe hit the end of the carpet, and I tripped, and I fell, yeah. and landed on it. Yeah, and it went, shoop, yeah. like, right up, you know, because his butt was greasy. It happens all the time. Sure. Yeah. I, I could totally yeah. see that. My sister used to, um, she used to do billing for a GI clinic, so, yeah, yeah. she had all kind of fun stories about yeah. people putting stuff up their butts and That's swallowing ridiculous. weird shit and everything like that yeah she used to tell me um danny rowling said how many people were murdered in this case um three it was two women and one little girl so uh yeah and like i said it was they're not really sure if the two ma main ones are related but we'll get into that in a little bit uh jeffy art said there was a comic store in a mall near my childhood home that used to sell godzilla action figures from bandai all from japan oh yeah that's good. i still have my collection well didn't you say that you there was a store near where you grew up in california that yeah day? it was called uh pinocchios mm. and they sold all that bandai stuff and stuff from bullmark at the other company yeah 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 the fucking it was cool man fucking um i had a damn jumbo machinder which is you know remember the big old mazingas and fucking dragons and shit that shogun shogun warriors put out well, that was a, those were knockoffs, basically. 
um, of the ones that they had in Japan. The ones they had in Japan, they were fucking even better. But I had a Japanese one. It was Combaler V. And fucking, I remember when I turned about 16, I threw that bitch away. That thing's worth four grand now. Four grand. I just threw it away. So, there weren't very many of them that came to the United States. Most of the ones that came to the United States went through that fucking, that fucking shop out there. I think it was Whittier, California. Alicia Marie said, I lived in Boca at the time. I have a crazy story. I moved to Florida in August 2007. Oh, that's when the uh, first incident happened, by the way. Uh, by December, I went home from Christmas break. No idea about the murders. Yeah, like the main, the the first murder happened in August and the second one happened like right in December, like right before Christmas time. And there were a couple of other incidents too where the people weren't killed, but they were kind of similar and they thought that they were maybe related. But yeah, so this happened in Boca Raton, which is, if you don't know, is um, about 20 miles north of Fort, Fort Lauderdale. So it's, you know, in the larger like Miami South Florida area way far from here way far from here yeah I, I do kind of feel like people um yeah. but when you say they're that you're from Florida um sometimes people don't realize how large Florida is like Miami I've been there a couple of times but it's far I mean it's probably from here a four or five hour drive yeah I think Florida's bigger than a lot of European countries. <laughs> I think Florida and Italy are about the same size. Are they? Okay. Now that I yeah. now that I'm thinking. And about Texas, it. if I remember, if I, if I recall, is twice the size of Germany. I think that, that's about right. Yeah, I mean, well, so the thing about these, these Italy, the thing about Italy is that it's it's kind of similar long. in size because it's long and narrow, kind of like Florida is, and I think it's very very similar. In size, yeah. so that's what. So if you're European, like if yeah. it's it's about the same size as the yeah, area. Florida. One a uh, couple years back, it's probably better now because uh, the index has gone up. We were had a G GDP similar to to the Netherlands, so Florida could be an independent country and, and survive. Alicia said, so she gets uh, she went home for Christmas break. No idea about the murders. I get back to Boca and hear my upstairs neighbor who's so creepy, fighting with his girlfriend, she's screaming, you killed her. It was so scary, I called my mom and told her I think he killed somebody. I had absolutely no idea they had happened, so I didn't think to call him in. I found out years later, holy shit. I wonder if that's the case, because they haven't, they never, they haven't caught the people that did it. So, you know what I mean? Might have just had a crazy girlfriend that was accusing him of killing somebody though too. Well, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. You never know. Yeah, I mean, you don't know the context of it, but still, I mean, if you heard somebody arguing upstairs and if you, like, if your upstairs neighbor was legit creepy and, like, yeah. you heard somebody saying you killed them, like, I would probably call that in just in case. You know what I mean? <laughs> you never know, like I said. It might be nothing, but it might be something. The cops wouldn't be able to do anything about it. I know, that's yeah. true. Yeah. But it would, it would probably just make you feel better yeah. that you did something. And that motherfucker's watching you. You read me out. <laughs> yeah, then they come down and kill you. Yeah, yeah, it's like, right. Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is scary. Uh, Camp Guy said, I believe it was someone from a nearby less affluent neighborhood, a really sharp, well-spoken, street sharper type criminal. Yeah, they kind of think that maybe... I mean, they have some suspects, but um, they haven't really caught anybody. So, all right. So this mall in Boca Raton, like I said, is kind of like, I guess it's sort of an upscale mall. It's not as upscale as the one in the Dan Bell video, but I think it's approximating those. And like I said, it seems pretty, like it still has all its shit together. It still has almost all of its anchors and has like, it has like a Tesla dealer. It has like, um, you know, a lot of uh, designer stores in there and shit like that. And is actually the largest enclosed shopping mall in Palm Beach County and the third largest in South Florida. So it's kind of big. It's a big deal. However, back in 2007, um, they started having some issues, like, with crime. Thank you very much, Bryce. I've never heard of these murders. This looks like a good episode. I had actually never heard of them either, even though I've lived in Florida pretty much my entire life. Um, like I said, South Florida is kind of far away, but these ones, well, I don't know. I don't know. We just never heard of them. And I guess it because it was more recent, even though 2007 was a long time ago. <laughs> to me, it seems recent. <laughs> Because it seemed like just the other day that it was 2007. But, um, you know, I, I'm more familiar, like I said, with ones that are older. Um, all right. So what happened in 2007? The first incident, uh, you know, that they know of, and this was like one of the major incidents. 
uh, there was a woman who was, she was 52 years old. Now she was originally from Brooklyn, but she had moved to Florida sometime in the past. She had two kids who were grown. Um, and she, was she 52 years old? Did I say that? Her name was Randy Gorenberg. Now on March 23rd, 2007, she went to the mall and this was like broad daylight. It wasn't night or nothing like that. It was like the afternoon. She goes into the mall and she buys, they know what she bought. Um, she bought a pair of shorts and she bought a John Legend CD. Now they saw, they, they saw her on surveillance cameras, like in the parking lot, like leaving the mall and like going out into the parking lot. And then later on, um, they found her, uh, black SUV, which was new. Like it was a Mercedes SUV abandoned in a Home Depot parking lot. So at this point, when they looked at the surveillance footage and they got some witness statements, about a half hour after she was seen leaving the mall on the surveillance footage, at least one witness, possibly multiple, watched her. She was in the passenger seat of her SUV and someone else, like some dude was driving it. And he basically just shot her twice in the head when she was in the passenger seat and just pushed her out the SUV. And like I said, this is the middle of the day. And he just like pushed her out the car in um, Governor Lawton Child's Memorial Park, which is in Delray Beach. And that's where they found her body like a little while later because a bunch of witnesses like called in and said, holy shit, we think somebody just shot a woman and like just pushed her out her car. Now, the only really leads they had about it was that they think that there was another car. I don't know. Um, this was just from the Palm Beach County like police website, but they just said a white Chrysler might have been involved. So I don't know if they saw the white Chrysler like on the surveillance footage from the mall parking lot, like maybe stalking her or something like that. Not really sure. But her abandoned SUV that they found, they got a bunch of DNA samples out of the car um and that they were kind of hoping that they would be able to match it to somebody obviously that's why they collected it but they have so far not found any matches interestingly and i'm not really sure why this is like i said there's not a huge amount of information about this case um you know it was kind of just repeating a lot of the same stuff and the palm beach county police website seemed to have the most stuff about it but they didn't really go into detail on a lot of things that i kind of wish they would but they said a lot of the genetic material that they found in the car, they matched it. They were trying to match it to friends of Randy Gorenberg's son, Daniel. So I was thinking that their earlier, th or their early theory was that maybe allegedly, I don't know if this is just me speculating here, but maybe they thought that her son, who I'm presuming was grown, like maybe in his twenties or whatever, because she was 52 that maybe he like hung out with some sketchy ass people and they were thinking that maybe he had set her up. I don't know why they would think that, but, um, but they did test a bunch of his friends like to see if that, but it didn't match any of them. Now they also tested her husband, Stuart. So I don't know, like I said, I don't know what her husband or son, I don't know if they were suspicious in other ways, and that's why, I mean, I know that they usually have to, like, eliminate family members and stuff like that first. But, you know, they didn't really give a lot of uh, specifics on that. There was some kind of reason. Yeah, there. that's what I'm saying. There must right. have been a reason. But I guess because they didn't find anything, they didn't really go far, too much into it. How far away was, was the SUV from the body? Um, It couldn't have, well, I don't know, actually. I think the park is only a couple of miles from the mall. Okay. So they, like, basically just dumped her out in a park and then drove the... SUV somewhere and left it, like in a Home Depot parking lot. So they abducted her from the mall or from the mall parking from lot? From the mall parking lot, yeah. And, then and like I said, it was the middle of the day. No, no, shot her in the car. They took her somewhere and shot her. Took her, well, they think what might have happened, because this is what happened in some of the later cases, even though they don't know if this is related, but they think that it might have been, they might have driven, made her drive to like a ATM or something like that and yeah. like take money out and then shot her and dumped her out. Of the there car. was no records of an ATM withdrawal. The, in her case, I don't think so, but I think because there, that's kind of what happened in some of the later cases. But like I said, I'm not really sure if these two are related. Something happened. They were going to abduct her and steal money or steal the vehicle. 
and they had to shoot her. I mean, and it's then pretty. They, then they bailed. It's pretty freaky that this. I mean, this wasn't even at night. Like I said, this yeah. was like the middle of the fucking afternoon. You just go in the mall. It's actually pretty common. I know it is, but like yeah. that, like I said, that's like really. I don't want to say ballsy because that sounds like I'm admiring, but I was like, it's, you know. <clears throat> well, they're desperate. I guess they have to get somebody for. They have to get some a person or a car, and the best time is in during store hours. You know, when, or you know during working hours, where people are running around. Yeah. And you guess you can get kind of lost in the crowd. But uh, just like you know when they abduct kids or women, it's from malls. It's it's during store hours. Yeah. A lot of people have been abducted from malls over the years. I don't think it's yeah. as bad as it was because cameras came later yeah. on. But I remember in the 80s, that's where a lot of serial killers abducted women from malls. Christopher Wilder did that shit. Yeah. I remember that guy. Do we do a show about that guy? I don't know. He'd take him to motels, somebody to keep him for a few days and then kill him. He was what they called him the beauty queen killer. Yeah. He was the one that would always approach and say, Hey, I'm a yeah. photographer. Right, blah, yeah, blah, exactly. Blah. Like in mall parking lots. Yeah. Or inside the mall too. He yeah. would do that as well. I don't remember if we did a show about Christopher Wilder. I think we did, we but he's no, well, no. he's kind of um he's not originally American. I think he was Australian originally, but he moved here when he was younger. And I remember. I always remember him because one, he was on. Un, there was a show about him in Unsolved Mystery. He's dead now. Like they shot him in a police shootout. But um, like when he tried to evade police. But they thought that maybe he might have been responsible for those real famous um, Australia, like the Wanda Beach murders, yeah. which we did do a show about. Um, I don't know if if that's the. But he is one of the um killers that they kind of bandy about. For if I remember those. correctly, he would take them to, to hotels or motels. Yeah, I don't really he's remember all the details, but he's yeah. he's the main one. I know there's been more than one, like you know, that abduct people from par- from yeah. mall parking lots, but um, like he's the one that I mainly remember because yeah. I remember seeing like all those shows about him. Yeah, cameras put the kibosh on that though. Well, the weird thing about it is though, this happened in 2007. It was the middle of the day. There were cameras because she they caught yeah. her on surveillance cameras, like yeah. going to her car or whatever, so they knew what time she left the mall, <clears throat> but they still didn't Couldn't see, see any who did it. Yeah. <clears throat> they still couldn't see anybody. As far as I know, they didn't even really get, nobody got a good look at the person. So, um, so yeah. So, for a while, they were investigating um, her husband, Stuart, as well. Um, now, Stuart filed a lawsuit against the mall, presumably because it's like, you know, how could this happen and stuff, which, you know, that's understandable, I guess. But after a while, he stopped cooperating with the police department for whatever reason. And um, at least at the time, they said he was never eliminated as a suspect. Okay? So take that as you will. Not really entirely sure about that. Um, Like I said, they also looked into leads having to do with her son, Daniel, who I presume, like, hung out with sketchy motherfuckers. Otherwise, why would they bother with it? But Look, more money. Oh, thank you very much, Aaron. Have a drink on me, Jenny. Looking great as usual. Thank Thank you. you very much. That'll buy several drinks. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it. We could always use that money. We all, yeah. Well, yeah. Every, I like money. Yeah, I like money. You like money? <laughs> you like money? Uh, yeah. I like money too. <laughs> I can't believe you like money. I can't believe it. I know. What's the chances? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, Zach says, I often wonder in cases like this, how much is it just someone having a total psychotic episode or a real bad drug trip who doesn't even know what they're doing? Um, maybe I probably not as many as you might think. I don't know. Maybe it is more than I think. Some people are just like fucking. It's just more. Some dudes just fucking they're nuts and they're kind of semi semi. They're, they're either kind of semi suicidal. They don't care if they get caught or not. Maybe that part of them wants to get caught, so they'll do something real daring like this in front of everybody. Other ones are just, they think they're bulletproof. No one will ever see me. That's how slick I am. So they're just kind of delusional. I but it like, works. I feel like a lot of serial yeah. killers are like that. Look at it this way. Let's say you put your bicycle up on your front porch in the middle of the day. You come out 20 minutes later and it's fucking gone. You go, you go what kind of idiot would steal a fucking my bicycle off the front porch in the middle of the day? Couldn't have been that much of an idiot. He's gone. He's got your bicycle. Yeah, and you nobody saw. You're not going to get it back. You're not going to get it back, right? Yeah. Speaking of malls, somebody stole my bicycle from the mall because I rode my bike to the mall one time, Mm -hmm. and then I came out a couple hours later and someone had taken it. Mm -hmm. But even though it was locked up, I locked it on the bike rack. Was it an expensive one? No, but I was still. But then I had to walk home, and it was far. 
<laughs> was I was mad. Somebody with a car and a pair of bolt cutters. They jumped out and fucking cut a bolt. I was like, who the fuck wants my shitty bike? They threw it in the back seat and left. That's one. Of, that's really one of the only good things about being broke all the time is like nobody wants my shit. <laughs> that's why I was like, I'm not worried about my car or anything like that. It's like, steal it. Yeah, her car looks like shit. <laughs> I'm like, it's insured. Buy yeah. me a new one. I wanted no, to buy nobody her another wa- one. Nobody I wanted, wants that shit. I wanted to buy her another one, man, but fucking we got to get her credit cards paid off first. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, Alicia Marie says the most common place to kidnap is the grocery store. I believe it. I believe it. Probably more common. Well, because probably more common nowadays than malls because, you know, everybody got to go to the grocery store. Unless you get, unless you get Hello Fresh or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. I, well, I think some people have been kidnapped from, like, the Walmart parking lots, too. Well, because the thing about it is, like, those super Walmarts have those massive, massive parking lots. And, like, way in the back, you know, like, the one in Daytona, which was on Williamson, it had, like, a huge, huge, huge parking lot. And, like, the way in the back was, like, dark. There wasn't, I mean, there was some lights, but not that many. And, like, sometimes people would go, like, fucking camp back there, like, in their, uh, you know, campers and yeah. crap like that. So you were always finding, like, bottles of pee and shit like that. Yeah. Keep it classy. See, I don't Daytona. think that stuff is being recorded. I think there's just security guards supposedly watching the cameras. Except they're probably just like probably looking at porn and jerking yeah. it while they're supposed to they, be. They don't pay those guys very much and they're like, you know That's they, what I mean. It's like, yeah, it's beyond my pay grade. It might record it might record it, but then like they probably keep it for a couple of days and then they just record it over it. Yeah, I'm just thinking that like, yeah, why would you keep it? Because yeah. it's probably like hours and hours of like fuck Nothing. all happening. Yeah. Right. So, um, so for a couple of years, nothing ever really happened with this case. But a few years later, in 2011, uh, the authorities actually came out and they said that they had a person of interest in the case. Now, this guy was a dude named Michelle Barrera. And uh, as far as I know, he is still a fugitive from justice. He's actually um, associated with the MS-13 gang in South Florida. Um, He was also, prior to this incident, uh, he was also wanted for several other crimes. Uh, He has a very long list, including bank robbery, attempted murder of a law enforcement officer. Uh, There was like a police shootout during a high-speed chase and shit like that. Uh, He was actually on America's Most Wanted like three times. They're looking for his ass. He's gone. He's back to South America. But, um, well, yeah, he's from, uh, I think he's from El Salvador. Yeah, he's back in South Originally. That's where he is. Um, what, how he came to the attention of police, I guess, was that, um, a guy in prison, like an inmate told the cops that he had heard like some chatter inside about a gang, um, taking responsibility for the murder and that Michelle Barrera had been the shooter. So I'm not really sure if it was even a robbery or if it was like some kind of initiation thing, like allegedly, they don't know if this guy did it or not. Now, they did say that they, um, the surveillance footage that they had from the mall from when she was abducted, her car had been um, being followed by another car whose description looked like a car that was owned by one of Michelle's relatives that he drove sometimes. So that's kind of like why they, why he came to their attention. So the MS-13 gang, I had never heard of this gang, but um, I guess they're kind of like, they are based in Los Angeles, but I guess they have chapters everywhere, like like a gang does. And like I said, it was originally set up to protect uh, immigrants from El Salvador, like from other gangs, but then like it turned into its own gang eventually. Um, so yeah, and it's they're, they're supposedly like really bad motherfuckers. And so this guy, Michelle Barrera, is still a fugitive. Like you said, he's probably out of the country because this was a long time ago. Like 2011, yeah. they came out and announced where he was. But I think the like the last time he was on America's Most Wanted was maybe back in 2008, like a year after this happened. So yeah, he's back. He's back in the suburbs. Either that, or he's been like mowed down at some point. Like they find his body though. I probably. don't know. He's back in El Salvador. They never find him there. They're just not wanted there. I'm imagine. I mean, yeah. he might. He very well might be. I don't really know. Yeah, unless he's got other charges out there. Yeah. But he's somewhere in South America where he can hide. Zach said, that reminds me of when me and my dad went shopping when I was a kid, and when we were almost done, someone stole our cart, so we had to go back and get everything all over again. <laughs> That's like somebody too lazy to shop. Yeah. Hey, that looks good. That I'm like just taking car. yours. <laughs> ah. 
Camp Guy said, someone took my grocery cart one time and I found it two aisles over with stuff inside I didn't select. That's so weird to me. Hmm. It's like, I can see stealing it. it. Well, I mean, I can see stealing it, like, after you've already paid for all of it. Yeah. But if you're just, like, walking around in the store and you haven't paid for it yet, why the fuck would somebody do These that? little kids. Little kids running I up, grab the cart, and running with it. Yay, I got yeah, it! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got all the cereals. Yeah. <laughs> then they throw it and run. Go get another one. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, but, yeah. So, um, as I said, this murder is still not solved. This I poor... You call um, it. Yeah, what's the matter, Pope? Yeah. This she, poor woman just fucking... At the mall, buying a pair of shorts, and then suddenly she gets fucking shot in the head and pushed out of her own fucking car, which, you know, that's sucky. So that happened in March of 2007. Now, in August of the same year, there was um, a woman, unnamed, because, you know, she's still alive, thankfully, but um, she was kind of a younger woman, and she had a t- her two-year-old son with her, and they were abducted from the same parking lot, the Boca Raton uh, Town Center. I don't know what the fucking official name of this mall is. Like, the Wikipedia page called it the town center at Boca Raton, but they said it also is called Boca Town Center, Town Center Mall, or just Town Center. So I'm like, okay, make up your fucking mind. I guess it's called Town Center at Boca Raton is the official name, but whatever. So, so yeah, so this woman and her two-year-old were um, abducted from the same parking lot. Now, they were forced at gunpoint to go to an ATM, and they, and she had to withdraw $600, now, what the guy did was he he tied them up, like, with zip ties and put duct tape over their mouths and their wrists, I think. And then he had these goggles that were, like, blacked out. Yeah. And he put them on there, too. And that's, like I said, that's kind of a detail that'll come up later because that happened again, in, like, in the later murder case. But these two, thankfully survived like the guy just took them to the atm like with all the shit on their face and they took out six hundred dollars and gave it to him and he just like took them back to the mall parking lot and just dropped them off so they actually you know obviously went right to the cops and were like what the fuck but they didn't really see the dude you know what i mean like all that well he took them in his vehicle or their vehicle um i think theirs and then he took them back and then he got jumped out of the vehicle left him in there i guess i'm not real clear on like whose vehicle it was no description of the guy there was, you know what, um, this guy in particular, they do have, there is a sketch of him. If you go to, if you Google, like, Boca Town Center murders, um, there's really only one sketch. He looks like, <laughs> the sketch kind of reminds me a little bit, I know this is going to sound funny, but he kind of reminds me a little bit of Steven Seagal. Well, okay. it's a, but, Steven Seagal, but also kind of like with a weird, because he had like a kind of a, I remember he had like a weird Gilligan-y type hat on. Okay, like but he kind of, right, kind of. It kind of looked like that. But he looked like a, a, maybe a white guy or maybe a Hispanic guy. It was kind of hard to tell. Yeah. But um, but yeah, but there is a Steven he, Seagal, folks. Steven Seagal. <laughs> yeah, Steven Seagal movie. did it <laughs> with, a, with with probably like a booty cap he, on. It wasn't fat enough. He wasn't yeah. fat enough to be he, Steven Seagal. Well, he went on a diet. I this, guess he had that booty cap on to make it look more ex- like 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 a SEAL special operation. I guess. Yeah. I mean, they said the guy had, like, a hat and sunglasses, so they didn't really get a good look at his face. But yeah. they, so in the sketch, like, he has, like, a hat and sunglasses on. So it's hard to tell what he looks like. Now, a few days after this incident, there was a 19-year-old woman who, thank you very much, Jeffy Art. <laughs> this is my hero. <laughs> yeah, I'll give, it, I'll, I'll give it to Seagal. Oscar Perez says, maybe a white guy, maybe a Hispanic guy. Relatable. <laughs> it's all about the same. Well, I mean, whoever drew the guy was just, uh, it seemed like they were kind of trying to hedge their bets, you know Hispanic what I mean? is the new white now. <laughs> you said white. White. <laughs> yeah. Like white. H-W. Yeah, yeah. The H. Yeah. Now, a few days after that, this 19-year-old woman, now, she wasn't actually at the mall. She was a couple miles away at Misner Park. Um, I think it was, that's about four miles away. And the same thing happened to her. Like, she got robbed at gunpoint also. And the guy took her to an ATM, um, but she gave him $200, and and he let her go. So those were two more incidents. Like I said, they don't know if those are related to the Randy Gorenberg murder. But then, uh, a few weeks before Christmas of 2007, it was actually December 12th, one of the security guards at the Boca Raton Town Center Mall 
saw a Chrysler Aspen, like a 2007, a black one, in the parking lot with the engine running. It was actually parked um, near the Sears, which is gone now. It's like I said, I think it closed in 2018. Now, he didn't really like approach the car or anything like that. He just saw the car and it was the engine was running and it didn't look like anybody was in it. So he was like, well, that's weird. So he called the police department. He didn't call 911, but he just called like the non-emergency line or whatever and said, can you like have a cop come out here and like check it out? So police came out and found inside the vehicle a 47-year-old woman named Nancy Bochichi, Bochicchio, I think is how you pronounce her last name, and her seven-year-old daughter, Joey. Uh, both of them were tied up and shot. Damn. They were both dead. So the cops obviously, uh, you know, combed through there and got like a bunch of DNA and everything like that. And then they were trying to figure out, like, you know, they went back through, uh, you know, the surveillance footage and everything like that to kind of figure out what had happened. So what ended up happening with Nancy and Joey, they have surveillance footage of them going into the mall, like between the Sears on the Nima Marcus um, on the afternoon of Wednesday, December 12th, 2007. It was about 2.19 p.m. That's when they were on the camera. They were in the mall for almost an hour. Um, they came out the same doors at about 11 minutes past 3 p.m. And at that point, I guess they didn't see what happened to them, but they're presuming that at this point they were abducted from the parking lot, someplace where the cameras maybe couldn't see them. And then they were taken to a nearby ATM where they were forced to withdraw $500. There is a record of that. Now, there was a 911 call made from Nancy's cell phone. Um, the, the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office got it, but the call was disconnected before they could answer it. So the operator actually tried to call the phone back, but no one answered. So maybe just... That's why she, maybe that's why she got shot. I, well, yeah, I'm not really, now. Maybe he saw her on, with that phone trying to call. Yeah. And shot her. Maybe so. But the thing about it is that this seemed to take some time because just like in the prior case where the woman and her son were abducted um nancy and joey were also bound with um zip ties duct tape and the goggles oh, they both had that right it's the same guy yeah that well obviously yeah. that's like the same dude yeah. now um so they were must have been in the car for like a while because they said their hands and feet were tied um and then they also like had stuff like around their neck too so like they couldn't move as much now, when they found the bodies, Nancy's, um, the bindings on her wrists were broken. Now, I saw another source. Like I said, there's not a huge amount of information about these cases, but I saw another source that said her wrists were broken. And I said, I don't think that's the case because the information that I got came right from like the Palm Beach County Police Department thing. And I think that whoever wrote this other thing was using that, but misunderstood. Okay. They said that, the, the bindings around her wrists were broken. Her actual okay. wrists weren't broken, as far as I know. So they don't actually know if she was trying to break the bonds, and that's why they should, or maybe the person, like the killer, did it, or something like that. They're not really any sure. They're not really it's sure. It's weird that he uh, committed two of these things. He let, what was it, the first couple go. It was a mom and her mom and, and yeah. her little son. He was the two. Second, second couple he killed. Yeah. He got a total of uh, 1100 bucks for this, didn't he? Yeah, 605 Yeah. And maybe they don't know if he was the same guy that did the one in Misner Park. Right. Like that 19-year-old girl that he let go. That was $200. He let her go? Yeah. Did 200 yeah. That wasn't at the mall. That was a yeah. couple miles away, though. He's awful desperate. He's not get, making much money. And then he's got he's to gotta lay money out for the damn goggles and the, the zip ties. That's what car. I mean. This seems he's, really weird. It spray, seems spray really weird. Goggles. Yeah. To go to that much effort for Over just like a, a robbery, and like yeah. you said, like a small amount of yeah. money. When he's just a real novice, I guess. I mean, you could do a note job at a bank and have a much greater catch and a better and, and a better chance of success doing a note job, and you don't have to kill anybody. And if you get caught doing a note job, you don't even have a gun on you. 
it's not armed robbery. See, see that's what I was thinking. Then, that's what I then, would then, do. Then up, yeah, and it ends up, the feds might pick it up, so you do fed time, nice and sweet, in the federal penitentiary instead of some state. So there's just a bunch of different ways to steal money to where the you can get more for less rat risk, and then you end up as a, in a better offender profile, so you can end up in a sweeter prison. It just doesn't make any sense. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's just some dude. He's it's Steven Seagal. It's Steven Seagal. That's who it is. <laughs> allegedly, go. That's why he's in Russia. Allegedly, he's right now. I don't know but why. I don't know why the it. sketch reminded. Because I mean, I saw the sketch a couple hours ago, so it could be that I'm just kind of conflating. But for some reason, like that was the first impression that I got yeah. when I saw the sketch of the person. I think. I think what happened is that she was getting away. She was going to get out. He 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 thought she had. He he saw her using the phone and try or or you know he saw her using the phone. He kept, or she had busted she her wrist out of that. And he he panics and sh shoots them both. Were there any more after this? Not that I know uh, of. He didn't have a belly for it. He's like this ain't worth it. He stopped doing it. Camp guy said he knows lots of single women go to malls and you know affluent. Yeah, I guess so. You're not gonna get anything. You're not gonna get anything out of him though. Well, and the weird you do thing about job, you can get twenty grand. The thing about forcing people to go to ATMs, yeah. it's like mo you can only take so much out of an ATM every day. You know, there's a limit. Yeah. So. And you know, you, you're not. He's not stealing enough money to live on. So why is he bothering with this? Like I said, you could do a no job, probably get twenty grand. You know, that's what the cashiers might have. They might have around that. I mean, and that's the thing. If I was going to turn to a life of crime, I would probably do something like yeah, that. Yeah, you want to go to where you're 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 going to get a you a just want score, one big score, one big score, less chance of getting caught. And if you do get caught, you're going to do sweet time for it. You're going to do a lot better. Yeah, time. I think the w the best way to go about it, like I said, I'm not going to do this, yeah. but I'm just saying, if I was going to, would be like you said, like don't have any weapons on you, don't no. threaten anybody, anything like that. No. You could just like you know. Just go in there with, because they have to give you the money. Yeah, yeah. He, it's the guy that's working the system. They have to give you the money. Yeah. And um, well, because they don't want anybody to get killed. You right. Know what I mean. Yeah. And then you know he's got a bit. You know there there are guys who at least uh, back in the eighties and nineties that they were professional guys um, from middle class backgrounds doing this. So some of them educated and had hit forty or fifty banks. Some of, sometimes they'd hit a bank three or four times, you know, over a period of years. They'd go back to a bank that they already did. And they were living in, living totally normal lives, and the wives never knew that the dude was a bank robber. And the dudes were doing it in their 60s and 70s. I remember hearing about Remember that, that guy? And he would leave on a bicycle. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's nothing, yeah, there's like, it, it's not suspicious if you just yeah. see like an old dude riding a bike down the sidewalk. Old dude riding Yeah, yeah. That's, Yeah. I mean, sometimes, like I said, I'm not a big fan of, like, obviously people that come in and, like, you know, shoot people and shit like that. But it's, like, I almost kind of have, for big heist-type crimes, yeah. like I said, I read a book about, um, and I still want to do a show about it, but it never wins in the poll, um, about the Antwerp uh, diamond heist. Like, those guys, that gang that did that, and I don't think they ever got caught, and they got, like, a shit ton of yeah. money. And, um... But the way that they went about it was just, like, so meticulous. And, like, yeah. they thought of everything. I was like, you, I'm like, almost, that's kind of awesome. Well, they were organized criminals. And they didn't hurt anybody. Yeah. They didn't hurt anybody. Well, yeah, they, you know, they stole money. It's, it's illegal, you know. Right, I know that. But it's just, like, they, uh, I'm always kind of like, They were just <laughs> organized criminals. They had inside information. They knew where it was going to be. And they got a plan together to get it. But, um. You know, anytime, anytime you're using violence with any of these kind of crimes where you're trying to steal, like for instance, you say, well, I don't want to do a note job. I'm going to do a, I want to do a fucking takeover robbery. Me and all my friends are going to run into this bank. We're going to have assault rifles and masks. It'd be just like out of the movie Heat. And we're going to shoot the fucking ceiling up and intimidate everybody. And we're going to get as much money as we can. We're going to try to get them to open the vaults and then we'll run out of there. That's basically what fucking old... E Emil and the other guy did for the fucking South Hollywood shooting. Yeah, we did do a show about yeah. that. Yeah. As soon as they s the feds see you robbing banks with fucking assault rifles and body armor and masks and shit, you go right to the top of the list. They are like, oh, these motherfuckers are dangerous. They're going to kill somebody. Yeah. Sooner or later. And they're going to move you to the top of the list. They're going to be forgetting all about these damn dude, these old men doing note jobs. Well, who who stole more money 
over time, those dudes are the no jobs. Yeah. You know, because they just, yeah, they're trying to catch them. They're just not, but they're not real high priority because they're at real low risk. And there's lots of those. You know, there's lots of guys doing that. And the that. thing about it, I just can't be sad about people stealing money from banks. Yeah. They have plenty. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Damn, but you know what well, I mean. But, but yeah, but they're if you're, insured. Yeah, yeah. They're that's insured. what I. That's what I mean. It's yeah. like, oh, they're not going to be homeless right. or anything like that. Don't worry. Yeah. Don't worry about them. Right. Bank, bank robbers are going against, going up against in, entire institutions. They're, they're, it's, they're, they're at war against a system, not necessarily an individual. And uh, if they're doing no jobs, and fucking the feds know all about what a no job is. You know what I mean? Like, and, and the banks know what a note job is. Yeah. It's just that for insurance purposes, it's better just to go along with it, give them the money out of the risk. Well, yeah, because you never know. I mean, right. you don't want the situation to go yeah. sideways and then, like, you're culpable yeah. all of a sudden. Yeah. That money's insured. They'll get reimbursed. That's what I mean. So it's yeah. just, like, it's not worth it getting people yeah. And killed. they will eventually catch you. I think mean, most of those yeah. dudes, they eventually catch That's what I mean. See, it's yeah. like, I, I think about it sometimes. I'm like, man, it'd be really cool to, like, you know. They'll eventually do, catch you. But... Yeah, I'm just, I, I'm not a master criminal, You'll do about obviously. 10, 15 years. It would yeah. be something, it would be some yeah. dumb shit I forgot yeah. about, and then I'd be like, that'll be what gets But if you caught. did a takeover robbery, like something out of the fucking heat, and even if you didn't kill anybody, you're probably going to do 40, 50 years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, you know. It's not really um, good. Oscar Perez says, tying up and shooting a seven-year-old and her mom, scumbag. Yeah, yeah, shit. yeah. You cold I mean, just fucking hell. Cold-blooded. I Can't got a feeling that that was his that was that was his first and last one. He, he probably maybe I'm not really sure, he or he might have gone someplace else. I don't think he killed that first woman. I think that was unrelated. Yeah, the, the cops are um they're like, well, it could be related, but they're thinking maybe not. But they do think that the murder, like the Nancy and Joey murder, yeah. is related to the other. They think it's the same dude that did the other um kidnapping. Yeah, like where the the woman and the yeah. and the baby lived. It's the same dude. It's got to be. I mean, that's like... I don't think the intent was to kill any of the victims. It was just immobilize, intimidate, get their money and go. And he thought it'd be easy to be able to get do a bunch of them. Man, you can't get away with that long, for a long period of time. Something's going to go wrong with that plan. And you've got to do this on a regular basis to get enough money to live off of. That's what I mean. So, it's like yeah, 200 bucks here, 500 bucks there. It's, it's going like, to catch up with you. Yeah. It's like, shit, man, that won't even that won't yeah. even cover, like... A month. <laughs> Not even a month's worth of your rent. That, was, that won't even cover a week no. <laughs> mm. of my bills. No. So... Yeah, well, I was just talking about not even a month's worth of rent. I mean, right. I mean, yeah, like I said, what's that, like what's a, third, a third of our rent? Yeah. No, it's like, it's not even. Yeah. It's like maybe a quarter of the rent. Well, they asked, oh, what's his name? I think it was fucking, you know, George Nelson, you know. Why do you rob banks? He goes, that's where the money is. Fucking, you know. I think it was George Nelson. Can't, can't like, argue with that. Yeah, yeah. Why you rob? Why you rob banks? Because that's where your money is. Yeah. <laughs> Duh. Yeah. I mean. uh, Camp guy said, "Is his motive plain old murder? Is he looking for money or financial reward or a combination of both?" Money. And then Mark says, "Just looking at the amounts, if he wanted money, there's better ways. Money yeah. probably secondary to the kidnapping or control aspect. Yeah, maybe he's kind of getting off on it a little bit. I think you're giving him too much credit. I think he's dumb." Dumb and inexperienced. Well, most of them are dumb. Yeah, I mean, to be yeah. fair, I don't, I don't think he was into that. I think he thought this was a brilliant plan. He thought he's, he thought he was a criminal mastermind, and that uh, I kind of feel like they all made. Yeah, and that, and that you know he'd be able to like, do this mm, no. forever. You know what I mean? He'd be able to do this regularly and fucking be a millionaire in a few months. He didn't do the math. You know, he didn't figure the numbers. I think he's a real genius. <laughs> yeah, I'll just put goggles on their faces. I'll spray paint them black. They'll never, they'll never know it was me. Yeah. Well, he got away. He well, that's him. what I mean. It's like in some ways but it can't be that dumb. People. He had because... to kill two people for fucking five hundred bucks. Right. One of them a seven year old girl. That's a failure. Yeah. For five hundred bucks. Five hundred million. There are probably, there are people that would fucking think of that. They're just psychos. Like, oh yeah, five hundred million. Yeah, I can bring a little girl over here. Yeah, people but would do a bunch of fucked up shit yeah. for five hundred million. But for five hundred, no, no, that's fucking crazy. But they got crazy motherfuckers that'll shoot you over a fucking pair of sneakers and shit. That's what I mean. People have been shot over way less. Dumbass teenagers. Yeah. You know, if yeah. everyone's not in their right mind. Yep. And everyone's emotions are all heightened and whatnot. Yep. Um, Jeffy Art says, by the way, guys, not to be one of those, but it's usually pronounced Maisoner Park, which is interesting because it occurred to me while I was reading the notes that 
I was like, I'm pro- I bet I'm pronouncing this wrong, even though it looks like it's very obvious how you would pronounce it, because it's basically like M-I-Z-N-E-R. And I was just like, why would you pronounce that a different way? But of course, because that's how we roll, I guess. Uh, and I'm thoroughly convinced it is, in fact, Steven Seagal. Yeah, it probably is. Yeah. Yeah, allegedly. It probably is. Alleged, allegedly. Allegedly. Don't sue me, Steven Seagal. Yeah. And don't, and don't sit on Steve me. Steven's going to fucking call me because I keep hearing you keep talking about me on your fucking show. <laughs> Don't think I'm not so fat that I'll come out there and whip your fucking ass. <laughs> I'm still six foot two, goddammit. <laughs> Better fucking respect me. I'll fucking get. I'll, I'll go. go I'll, I'll go all the way to Florida from Russia. I'll even bring Putin with me. I'll fuck you up. That's what he's saying. To They're me. gonna ride over here on their yeah, unicorns. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll fuck you up. And I keep seeing that fucking shirt you're wearing. That f- flock of cigars. I'm gonna kick your ass for that. <laughs> and stop talking about Kelly. <laughs> They're not still married, are they? No. I was gonna he still want people to talk about her. Well, what, why is that any of his business That's my anymore? Ex-wife. God damn it. Don't you talk about my ex wife. I still got a hold on that. <laughs> okay, Steve. <laughs> Does he really think that? Best piece of ass ever. Even better than an Asian experience. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Ah. <sighs> Camp Guy says, Israel Keys robbed a bunch of banks. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, Israel Keys is one of the suspects or persons of interest. I forgot in which one that was. We're going to talk about him in a little bit. Okay. Uh, Jeff Yard said, by the way, uh, is it Milner or Mit? I don't know if you're talking about Mason or whatever. Has an amazing ramen restaurant called Ramen Lab and a great bakery called Just Baked. Sorry, local mm-hmm. eats plug in. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, Mark says, I think taking the victim to the ATM and making them get him money is a control move, too. Maybe. I mean, it may be. Uh, Zach said, by the way, the photo you have on the thumbnail is both gorgeous and creepy as fuck. That is actually a photograph of, um, the, of Nancy and Joey's vehicle that was left in the parking lot. I don't know if they, if they took the picture, like, when it was, but yeah, that's what the picture is. Always trying to get on camera. You're trying to get on camera, please. Well, you want to be on camera? She's like, no, 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 no. I'm escaping. Oh, look at her face. Yeah. She's like, oh my god, what just happened? Yeah, yeah. What just happened? You have a flying poop. What does it matter? She's like, I don't. She's been running around making noises all night. Yeah. Why are you talking? Who are you talking to? She's like, pay attention. Yeah. She's like, I don't give a fuck about the show. <laughs> she, look, she's look, she's making a little mad face. Yeah. You want to go out? You want to get down? You can get down. She's oh, like, yeah. fuck this. She's, yeah. a, she's not a lap kitty. Yeah, she likes to be on the yeah, floor. She likes you to come down on the floor to yeah, her she's level. Yeah, to go down the floor with her car. Yeah, she, but she doesn't like to be up. She doesn't like to get picked up and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah. So, sadly, they did get, like, some DNA out of the vehicle. Again, it didn't match anybody, uh, at least so far. They don't know um, where exactly Nancy and her daughter were shot like if they were shot at the mall or if they you know drove them somewhere else and shot them and then brought it back they also don't know because i guess it was out of the range of the cameras um when their car was returned to the parking lot like with the dead bodies in it so you know they didn't find out any of that stuff so a couple days after this happened um they actually put out uh put out in the public they did like a reward of four hundred thousand dollars um because the fbi at this point had come in and so basically they just went full on into the investigation. Cause like I said, it's like, this is a mom and her daughter for Christ's sake. So they're going to get real, um, you know, they're going to really want to get to the bottom of this. Now in the initial stages of the investigation, they actually did identify two persons of interest for reasons, which will become clear in a minute. Only a few days after the incident, like almost a week later, I think it was December 18th. They, um, They found there was this guy named David Goodman. And then they also had like um, a drawing of a dude that at that time they only knew was named Charles. And they released those to the media as these are like persons of interest. So if you know anything about them, like come forward with information. Now this Charles person um, was later identified through a witness as a guy named Charles Jackson. Now the reason that they wanted him uh for questioning was because there were records like saying that he had nancy's cell phone right um and also the other guy david goodman 
had um, possession of Nancy's credit card. So that's kind of why they were interested to talk to them. So after they released this information to the media, um, only actually, I think it was only a couple of hours later, they actually found David Goodman. Uh, they found him at in a Miami Burger King, of all places. So they didn't arrest him, but they took him into custody and like questioned him. And uh, he, they actually did arrest him, like, but not for that. Like he had an outstanding warrant so for some other thing. So they arrest, arrested him for that so they could keep him longer. And then the next day, they found the other guy, Charles Jackson. Uh, he was also in Miami, and they interviewed him as well. Now, basically what these two guys said, they don't think, I don't think at this point, they think these two guys are like the killers. But they essentially, um, they stated that they found her cell phone and her credit card um, just in, like, on First Avenue, Northeast First Avenue in Miami. And I guess, like, their story checked out. Um, because as far as I know, they were never like arrested for either crime, but they just thought they were like kind of suspicious cause they had some of her stuff. You know what I mean? But they found it, but they said they found it like just in the street or I don't know if it was in the street or in a dumpster Dude, or something yeah, like ever that. Had ditched it. Yeah. That's kind of what they're suspecting. Yeah. So, but I guess these two guys, like, you know, they, their stories like, yeah. uh, checked out. So, um, so yeah, so they're, the cops are down in Miami you know, uh, passing flyers out down there because they think, well, you know, maybe since the stuff was dumped down here, like maybe this is where the killer is as well. So basically that's as far as I know, like where the case is at the moment. Um, I was watching, there's a couple on YouTube. There's, um, like a couple updates. It seems like they do an update like every year and they're just like this many years since the case is not solved and everything like that. And a lot of the cops in question are really, um, you know, because I guess it was because it was a mom and a little girl. I mean, they're taking it real personally. Yeah. So, um, oh, you got to be brought to justice. You definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So a lot of them are like really like, yeah. you know, head up to like, uh, you know, to solve it. Just a mom alone, but come on, seven year old girl. Nah, you got to go. How to jail. can you? I mean, and she's like cute as shit too. You got to go to jail, bro. I mean, that's he's like, probably watching this. He's probably watching this program. You got to go to jail. Well, dude. see, that kind of like freaks me out. I was thinking about anytime we do a show yeah. about. A case that's this recent. I mean, 2007. It's you know sort of recent, and they never around. caught the person. Yeah. Then he's you know you always got to kind of like worry that he's gonna like turn out. I think what it was. Uh, nah. I think what he was was a, a, a novice criminal mastermind, self-made criminal mastermind. And that he came up with this uh, sophisticated plan to uh, make regular money uh, by hijacking people and taking them to the to the uh, ATM not realizing that kidnapping alone fucking carries a lot man in, in a lot, most southern states like Louisiana and Mississippi kidnapping and that's just taking someone somewhere where they do not want to go is a life sentence well kidnapping is a federal yeah, offense it's a life sentence in most of yeah so you so this whole thing you know grabbing your ex grabbing your ex girlfriend and throwing in the car come on we're going that can bring you life in most southern states. Yeah, um, don't do that shit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so, you have to, if you're a professional thief or a professional criminal, you have to weigh all these charges that are going to be leveled against you. Just kidnapping somebody's life or close to life. So you're like, man, you really want to commit a crime where if you get caught, you do life? That's even more than the robbery? You know, yeah. And then you say, "Well, you know, if I get caught as life, so maybe I should just kill these people." Now you got that on your head. You know what I mean? So I'm saying this is a novice. This is somebody who doesn't really understand the system. Probably never done any time. Doesn't really know the law. A good professional criminal knows the the criminal law in and out. They know all of what could be leveled against them and how much time they get for it, what the prosecute, you know, what the pro successful prosecutions, what does it take for that, how much, ev what evidence that they need, what can they get on a plea bargain. They know the whole fucking system. They even know what prisons they're going to go to. 
oh, they'll probably send me to the central lockup. I'll be there for a couple of years, and then they'll send me out to one of the other fucking penitentiaries. It's in their the five-year plan. plan. Yeah, and, oh, you know, Marky's down there, and oh, I'll probably be able to see, you know, Woody Wood, you know, we'll, I'll see him, and <laughs> yeah, I'll see fucking Chain Lightning, we'll, we'll all hang out, you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. Chain Lightning. Chain Lightning. Yeah, that's that's his that's his that's his that's his ex pimp friend. Chain Lightning. Oh my you god. You send one lightning bolt after you after another. <laughs> All of them with titties on them. Okay. Chain Lightning. You know, just so they're gonna have. You know, so. Are you high right now? No, I should be though. So I don't think he knew what he was doing. And uh, on that one, with the little girl, he lost control of the damn situation. He shot that girl. He shot that woman probably. And it's, he goes, what am yeah. I going to do with this little girl? And he shoots her. Instead of letting her go, he shoots her. Right. Okay. Because he's scared of getting caught. Well, if you're scared of getting caught, why are you committing this crime? Then don't fucking do don't it. Fu- yeah, if you can't tip. do the time, then don't do the crime. You know, uh, 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 the criminal life is a bunch of gambles, you know. And uh, he, he wasn't ready. And I think this, I think this fucked him up, actually, if you ask me. I don't think he's a monster. I just think he's dumb. Or, or very unwise and I think that happened I think that fucked him up and I think he retired I mean it could go either way too because like I said I'm pretty sure I'm 99% sure like I said I'm not a cop or anything like that but 99% sure that this is the same dude that did at least that one other abduction of the mom and the two year old that was um, you know yeah. that, that they got let go and So I don't know if, like you said, it does seem like because Nancy's wrist, you know, the bonds on her wrist were broken. So it does seem like she tried to escape or call the police or something like that. And he maybe just freaked out. Or it could be that he, you know, started out doing that kind of shit. And then like a serial killer got braver and braver and started like pushing it farther. But since there weren't any other ones, like at least in this area, like who knows what might have happened. He might have got killed or he might have moved away or something like that. About but her it's... trying to break loose and call, that could be one of two things. He was talking so much cash shit that she got scared and tried to bolt with her life. That's one option. Another thing is, is that he was so soft, she didn't take him seriously. She thought he was full of shit. You know, <laughs> it could have been that too. She said, oh, he's a pussy. I- I'm getting out of here. Fuck this. I'm going. I'm taking my daughter with me. God damn it. Go ahead and shoot me. He did shoot her. Might have been something like that. Possibly. There's no, there's... He's like, I'll do it. I'll do it, bitch. I'll do it. You know, but he was, might have been a doofus. You know what I mean? It didn't really come across as a, as, as a strong, as a strong enough character to just commit murder. You know. So maybe she just didn't take him seriously. Yeah, that could be. Too. There's all different because that, that can go either way. You got to put yourself in. The, you have to have what's called uh, strategic empathy. You have to be able to fucking empathize with the enemy. What are they feeling? What are they thinking at the time? How is this going to go? What would happen if you tried to do this? And it could have been that she didn't take him seriously. Yeah, maybe. Fuck so. you! I'm getting out of here. You know, it's that kind of shit. And Which then he, I hate to say, but that's probably what I would do. Like my mouth would get me in trouble. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> he's just trying to do. Because I would kind just of, say some kind of sarcastic. Yeah, he's trying to do his second or third then little get shot in the face transaction, and then fucking, she puts him in the corner. She corners him, and fucking he he shoots her. And then the little kid starts screaming, and he's oh shit! He shoots her. I mean, that's fucked up. That's fucked up. He shouldn't have done it. Well, yeah, that's obviously. A, that's a bitch ass crime. Yeah, that's a bitch ass crime to begin with. Taking people to the ATM. That's some shit a crackhead does. There's not enough money there. And like I said, even you're if, free, it, well, and the thing about it, you, yeah. I mean, seriously, somebody abducts me and takes me to the ATM, I'm like, joke's on you, motherfucker, There's I don't have any money in there. there. <laughs> yeah, you get maximum 500 bucks. I'm like, $500? I don't yeah. have $500. That's crackhead money. <laughs> 500 bucks. I was like, I don't even have $50. If you don't have that, yeah. <laughs> but still, the most you're going to get is 500 bucks. So that's, that's crackhead money. That's not enough money to fucking kill somebody over or fucking jeopardize your freedom as a free man you know I don't give a shit how if you're that fucking desperate go for where the money is don't go to the fucking so maybe like you said maybe it is a crackhead I mean uh, I, don't I, don't, I, don't, crackhead. I don't know though I get the feeling that he's not because no. oh, yeah. because there's a lot of planning involved in this like I said he's got the zip ties yeah. he's got the duct he's tape he's got the goggles yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, he's an he's idiot. A criminal mastermind. He's an idiot, yeah, clearly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he thinks he seems to think that he's smart and he yeah. like has all of this shit planned out. But like I said, it's kind of interesting that you would think that if you just needed money and just you know were like I'm gonna kidnap people and take them to the ATM or whatever, you wouldn't go through all that rigmarole of mm. like binding them up because he yeah. did that to the mom and son too, and he yeah. didn't kill them. Yeah. So why would you go through all that trouble unless you had some other motivation? No, you're, you're reading in too much. There's people saying it was a power and control thing. No, if it was a power and control thing, he'd have raped him. All right, and it had been more about that. That's not what he was doing. He thought he was being real smart. You know, they'll never catch me. That kind of stuff. I'm a professional. But look at how low he's aimed his sights. He's he, he's willing to fucking jeopardize his freedom and jeopardize the lives of fucking innocent civilians over 500 bucks. But he thinks he's real smart. He's got a, this thing all planned out with the goggles and the, this and that. No, man, you couldn't fucking throw the gun down and just walk into a bank with a note, hand me the money, hand me the, hand me the money or I'll start opening fire on these people. And they'll give you a lot more money. And when you get caught, you'll do a lot less time. And the thing is, is if you're so desperate you need that much money, that prison time is your fucking retirement plan. You won't have to worry about paying bills when you go in there. Yeah, you can just like... They'll feed you, give you a place... Of, yeah, fun. yeah, feed you, fucking get housing, fucking uh, they show you movies, uh, uh, you know, fucking you can go out on a yard, you can do all kinds of shit, you know. So, you know, you've been there for about 10, 15 years and you don't have to worry about paying your rent. <laughs> Almost sounds nice. <laughs> well, uh, well, it's like those art thieves. Yeah. They steal the fucking piece of art, and then they go to the cops saying, I think I know where your piece of art is. If you give me the money, I'll go get it back for you. They arrest him. And then he sits in fucking jail for fucking four or five years, goes, I don't know where it is, but if you let me go and you give me the money, I'll find that fucking Rembrandt for you. And that dude, he did that many times. Sometimes he's in there for two years. Eventually they crack and go, okay. Then they let the guy go and give him the money, and then... Magically, the painting fucking reappears. You should do a show about that guy. Yeah, yeah. And he was holding it hostage the whole time. He had a whole bunch of accomplices out there. And him going to to prison was part of the plan. Yeah, he had it all mapped out. He had it all. him Because he was going to do a couple years in prison. Which I respect that. Yeah. He, he, didn't, he didn't hurt anybody. He never hurt anybody. Stealing shit. Yeah, he was but stealing he was, stuff. He, but he, what, he, he was going to go to prison. For a couple years and get out and get two or three million dollars, right? Which that, like I said, that all that. How much pretty, money is that a day? That sounds pretty reasonable. Yeah, you, so you, you're getting paid he, a lot of money dumb. per day. You're right. He had it all. He had it all figured right. out. Right. And he and like you said, he was willing to go to prison. Yep. He knew he knew he was going to go. Yep. And he would be like, "You guys have held me here for two two years." <laughs> you know what I mean? If I did anything wrong, maybe I paid for it. I haven't done anything wrong. If you let me go. I'm, and you give me the money, I'm pretty sure I could get that painting for you. I think I know who has it. Yeah. Yeah. He kind of has. So he's just holding it for family. hostage, and, and that sure. thing's a national treasure. They have to have it back. Yeah. And that's why he's doing it. Yeah. And he's not set. It didn't, he didn't steal a fucking Bob Ross. <laughs> Fuck no, he stole a fucking Rembrandt. Don't, okay, because he knew that that's real leverage. Yeah. That's going for the big bucks. You know, it's real leverage. I mean, Bob are... Ross, I fuck Bob Ross. If I could, he had a whole bunch of pain. <laughs> you know? Rembrandt died centuries ago. He's never painting anymore. Yeah, that's right. Unless somebody clones his ass. It's a damn priceless painting. It's a national fucking treasure. I they still, gonna... I yeah. still want to do a show about the Isabella Gardner Museum heist as well because yeah. I don't think they ever got those paintings back. They're still gone. Yeah, and that was a long time ago. That happened. Um, Jeffy Art said, anyone that hurts a little kid, babies, or animals is a special kind of evil and a yeah. coward to boot. Yep. Yeah. Big time. Or an idiot. Well, that, that yeah. those aren't idiot. mutually exclusive. Yeah, he's just an idiot, right. Jeffy Art said, what if it was some bored Boca brat? Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's a term. Some kid or guy from a local high-income background who went in too many internet chat rooms. You know, that might be a possibility. Maybe it's somebody that's not like a quote-unquote career criminal or something like that. Maybe it was somebody just Pretending. slumming or doing it for kicks. Yeah. That kind of seems more in line with what we're seeing. 
You know what I mean? Like he really didn't need the money. Right. That's what I mean. Maybe that's not exactly what the motivation was. Mark said he's a loser with a one-inch dick, probably. Yeah, I mean, that pretty much goes without saying. But yeah, so this case in particular, um, this this double murder, uh, has been on America's Most Wanted three times um, as of this episode. Maybe Actually, maybe more at this time, but I think it's been on there at least three times. And um, yeah, they've done the sketch. Like I said, it's not a great sketch. It's, the dude had sunglasses and and a hat on so they didn't really get a good look at him because like I said they think this was the same dude that kidnapped the um the woman and her son from the from the same mall uh they don't actually have any physical or forensic evidence that relates uh this case to the other ones but and they definitely think that the Randy Gorenberg one the first one that happened in uh March they think that was somebody else you know what I mean like because the Emma was not exactly the same even though it happened like in the same area um, now, one theory, somebody brought this guy up earlier that has been circulating about the Boca murders, or they call him like the Boca killer, I've seen him called as well, um, is that perhaps at least the murders of Nancy and Joey were perpetrated by serial killer Israel Keys. Now, we actually did a show about Israel Keys. I think it was episode 99, which was probably like four years ago. Now, he was, um, as someone mentioned, he was a serial killer and a bank robber, which you don't usually see those two things together. Uh, but he was also, uh, did kidnapping, burglary, arson, uh, and also a sex offender, because he was just ticking all the boxes, I guess. He was a real fucking dirtbag. He's dead now, thankfully. Um, now, they know that he murdered at least three people, um, and he did, like, a shit ton of other crimes. Like I said, he was an arsonist. He did armed robberies. He did rapes, uh, you know, just burglaries, shit like that. Um, this was from 2001 to 2012. That was, like, before they caught him. Now, while he was in jail awaiting trial, Israel Keys committed suicide. Because, again, coward got caught, and then he committed suicide. Um, he hanged himself and slashed his wrist, both, like, you know, just making sure, I guess. Now, they found in his jail cell, he left, like, a suicide note. And in this suicide note, he had drawn 11 skulls and, like, a Baphomet. And just, I don't know. He's, like, that's so edgelordy. Um, and some kind of, like, weird inscriptions that he had, like, written on the wall. And because of the stuff that he wrote in his suicide note, the FBI thought that maybe the 11 was a reference to how many people he actually had killed because they convicted him or they, you know, they know that he killed at least three, but they suspect that he killed more people than that. Um, and they think that his crimes go all the way back to 1996. Uh, he like raped a teenage girl in or in Oregon. Now, as I said, he is still, as far as I know, a suspect in these Boca Raton, not the Randy Gorenberg one necessarily, but um, the murders of Nancy and Joey, the mom and the daughter, because it's kind of similar to his MO. And also the sketch, it sort of kind of looks like him because like the description of that the mother gave, the one that was abducted with her son and, you know, survived, she described him, she said he had a mask and sunglasses on, but she did see like a glimpse of his face she said he was tall, um, he was athletically built, and had uh, kind of long hair, and sort of looked like Israel. I think, like, the pictures that I've seen of Israel Keys, he had short hair. But I think for a time, like, he did have, like, long hair. So it kind of, like, matched his description at the time. So some people have speculated that maybe it was him, because it was kind of similar. He had, like, the whole little toolkit thing and all that kind of crap, like serial killers do. So some people have thought that maybe that maybe he was the one that did that because they think that he did more crimes than he got, um, than he got blamed for. But like I said, they don't think that the same person that shot Randy Gorenberg in March and pushed her out of her car, they don't think that's necessarily the same person as the person that killed Seems like a different Nancy MO. and Joey. Yeah. That's what I mean. Because I think as far as I know, like the Randy Gorenberg one, I don't even know like if they stole her money or took her to an ATM or anything like that. I think they just like put her in, um, put her in her car and then like shot her and pushed her out, which to me seems more like they were thinking that one was more like either 
something to do with like her family, which is why they were interested in like investigating like her husband and her son and her son's associates and stuff. They either thought it was that or that it was like a gang thing, like a gang initiation type shit. Might have just been more like a carjacking that gone wrong. Yeah, it could have been that too. Maybe they wanted that SUV. Right, because it was and, and new, she, I think. Yeah, and it she, was a Mercedes. And uh, she put up too much of a fight, so they shot her. And then they go, okay, we got to ditch the car. It's too hot now. So yeah, maybe they, that's what. Maybe they, it was they, just that. Yeah, because there's a murder associated with it, so we got to get rid of the vehicle. And then the, the white vehicle that you said that they thought might have been associated with, and they picked the dude up after they ditched the car. He goes, yeah, fuck this one. We'll go get another one. Camp Guy said, uh, Israel Keys wasn't into rent cars and drive long distances. I wonder if they have car rental records for him during this time period. Yeah, I'd be interested to know that, too, because it does seem like, I don't know, you could get away with a lot more shit, like, back in the 70s and 80s during the serial killer heyday or whatever. Like, nowadays, it's really hard to rent a car or, you know, stay at a hotel or anything like that, like, without, unless you got, like, really, really good fake IDs. And everything is... I don't think there's as many offenders anymore, uh, either. I don't think there's as many serial killers as there used to no, be. No, I mean, there's still some wandering around. There yeah. always are, but... Um, I don't think there's as many of them as there used to it be. It really doesn't seem... Well, I kind of feel like crime in general has yeah. been declining since the 90s. But, you know, there's spikes here and there, but it's not the way it used to be. I think people really forget, like, how how high the crime was, like, in the 70s and 80s. Yeah, the, the, the fucking 70s were fucking violent as fuck. They were, yeah. Yeah, people, people don't realize it. They were. It's I a. Think, it's a lot yeah, better. My, yeah, eighties a little bit too. I think, and you know, my hypothesis was uh, leaded gasoline. And like I said, you're not the only person that leaded says gasoline. that. I don't think that's the entire thing, but um, I mean, there's probably like it's a lot of other factors, but I mean, that sounds like a pretty solid leaded gasoline. Hypothesis. I think was was was. was it's all kind of crazy motherfuckers running around back then. Somebody thought it was a good idea to put lead inside of gasoline, and that. After it blows out the engine pipe, what, it's not lead anymore? No, it's lead. It's blowing around everywhere. And people are breathing it in as young kids. I remember when I was a kid in California, you could see the smog. And I'd be, my eyes would be watering and I'd be coughing. And, and adults would look at me like, what's wrong with that kid? And, this, you know, and, 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 and people go, I think it's the smog. Adults didn't, weren't, weren't um, susceptible to it. But little kids, it was like you were smoking. Later on as a smoker, I realized what it was. Like you've been smoking. Yeah. Your eyes would burn. You'd breathe in. Yeah, that was another thing. There was so much <coughs> pollution back then. Pollution. And there was lead in that shit. And lead will make you violent and crazy. And, uh, you know, it wouldn't be to the same concentration in everybody. And uh, some people would get worse exposure than others. And it might tip a, a violent motherfucker over the edge and make him even worse. You know, just... Same thing was happening to the Romans, evidently, drinking out of lead pipes and eating off of lead silverware or, or lead plates. That's what I'm saying, because, and we talk about this a lot when we talk about, you know, serial killers, is that usually it has to be kind of like a conflation of factors. Yeah. I definitely do think that some people are born, like, with a proclivity toward that kind of thing. Yeah. And if they, if there are other environmental factors, like, they get abused as children, or like you yeah. said, you know, they grew up in the 60s or 70s and breathed in lead fumes all the time yeah. um and they already had that proclivity to work <coughs> violence or whatever yeah. yeah that's that's just like a yeah. fucking perfect storm of shit yeah you could get exposed to it and then once you're away from the lead cloud around big cities eventually you'd work it out of your system but it takes a long time to work things like lead and mercury out of your system yeah i i mean so i definitely good. think i i really want to look more into that because i'm like i said you're not the only person that i've heard like I've heard like other scientists and stuff like that yeah. like, talking about that being maybe being a factor because people have noticed that like yeah the crime used to be like really really horrible like back yeah. in the fucking 60s and 70s yeah mostly the 70s I feel like well I think feel like the serial killer I know you know people talk a lot about the 70s I think the the peak of the serial killer thing was 87 it was either 87 or 89 that was like the peak year but then like after that it started like precipitously and it declining like mid seventies, the late seventies. It seemed to be like, and mid seventies, maybe like early eighties. A lot of violence towards women. Yeah, and it just sounds like lead, lead poisoning. You know. Yeah. Mix. They're mixing fucking sex and violence together. 
Just like uncalled for shit. Just abducting fucking random women and sticking ice picks through their ears like the toolbox murderers. Yeah. That was 70s, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, what did we need to show about that? Well, because yeah. I get confused because there's two different... Yeah. There's two different cases that are called toolbox... Yeah. You know, murders or whatever. Basically dealing with fucking mutants. Yeah. They were probably born under those conditions, too. Fucking just born born in a cloud of fucking toxic fucking waste. Yeah. And it went way back because you look at Albert Fish, he was doing crazy shit during the, during the fucking industrial revolution. Some of these some of these uh cities during the industrial revolution were fucking polluted they beyond were just your, Yeah, they polluted beyond your wildest imagination. You know, fucking mercury and lead was everywhere. Uh, mercury especially because they were using it to ha- tan hides and do yeah. things in the leather industry and they didn't give a shit they everything was just... they're drinking the water that they had fucking pissing in they're just fucking crazy and uh there's no accurate crime statistics from those eras like say in 1800s new york so people just knew that it was like hell on earth you know so, yeah well because they, oracle they points out mean. Yeah. many crimes historically went on or underreported yeah yeah and especially back then i kind of feel like really they didn't have shit even until the 70s they didn't really have like a nationwide network where you could kind of like catch a dude if they went to another state yeah. or something like that there they were didn't no, even have that there were no cops as you would recognize them until i think the 20s 20s was when and you really, the police of the twenties were were more kind of like mall security. You know, they were they were. <laughs> and before before the police, they didn't really have them. People just carried guns, and um, you had sheriffs and shit. And if they if they needed to catch somebody, they'd just get a bunch of bunch of citizens of, together who were able bodied and had horses, and they would deputize them and make them into a posse. That we're going to catch these guys. The closest thing to anything that you would call organized policing and detective and forensics work would have been like the Pinkertons. That was 1800s. They were a private security agency. Matter of fact, they they were they protected the president. They were basically the Secret Service for a long time. The Pinkertons. And the Pinkertons did bad shit. If you're fucking... I wanted to do factor, a show about that. We need to well. do a... Yeah, they recruited from... They were, they were a book of Boba Fett's, really. They would recruit people right out of prison. If they had certain talents, they would just hire anybody. Um, as long as they could get the job done. Including women. You use a lot of sex operatives and shit. And, uh, you know, but if your factory was getting ready to have, was having a revolt, you could call the Pinkertons and they'd show up with fucking guns and machine guns and shoot into the crowd and fucking disperse fucking riots by force. And that shit was just totally good to go in, in old America. They just did whatever they wanted. If you had money, this shit would fly. Oracle says, Tom, don't forget about white lead being used in makeup from the Roman Empire up through at least the Elizabethan era. Yeah. yeah. They, I mean... Well, the Romans also seasoned food with powdered lead. I mean, the shit that was in people's <laughs> houses, too. Yeah. Like, if you read... I read this really great book, like, a few years ago. I can't remember the name of it. But they were talking about, like, just all the poisonous shit. Yeah. Like, especially, like, up until the Victorian era, like, a little bit after. Just... People like even your everything in your house, like your wallpaper, curtains, everything yeah. like that, was just toxic. Lead based paint. Yeah, everything was like the dyes that they used. Yeah. Like for it was just like unbelievable. And it's just known these are mind altering substances that make you fucking mean as shit. Yeah. Uh, James Knapp says violent crime peaked in 1991 and dropped every year till 2016. Mm. Yeah. I knew it was sometime. I, for some reason I thought it was 1989, but yeah, so I was kind of close. What they're talking about in 91 was the fucking, that sounds like the peak of the crack epidemic. Yeah. It's probably what you're talking about. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. I guess that was a right around then, wasn't it? Yeah. It, was, it started to die down after that though. Yeah. I mean, I remember, I mean, I was a little kid in the 70s, but I definitely do remember it being, but it's weird because it, I remember it being like, or people perceived that it was a lot more dangerous, but then like parents and stuff like that were a lot more lax too. There was no internet. Yeah, that's true. There they were just like, yeah, go yeah. out and play, come back yeah. later when it's dark. It was mostly safe though. Yeah. Depending on where you live, but it was mostly safe. Yeah, I didn't really have too much mm. trouble. Like when I was People forget up. how big the United States is. 
yeah, I mean, it's... I guess it's not, like, not any consolation if, like, something bad does happen to you. Because it can happen, but, um, you know. For the point of view of an American, if you're not in America, yeah, all these crimes happening, but they're always happening somewhere else. They're not yeah, happening I mean, to you. usually. They're usually, usually happening somewhere else, and they're not happening to you. It's just, it's, it's fucking big. There's a lot of people here. And the thing about it, too, is that I think people have a perception that there's more crime that there than there is because you hear about it so yeah. much. But the reason you hear about it is because, one, everybody wants to hear about it because yeah. that's just how humans are. We like to hear about that kind of, like, morbid shit. But yeah. also because it's unusual. If it happened all the time, they wouldn't even bother reporting it. You know what I'm saying? So the fact well, that... there's a lot of crimes they don't even bother reporting. Well, yeah. But... Yeah. That's been going on forever, though. Yeah, that's new. true. That's not true. New. Jeffy Art says, uh, I also think serial killers will now change their MO in order to throw off the authorities. And the thing about it is that I'm sure there's still serial killers running around. I mean, the Long Island serial killer is probably still out there. And there's some other ones as well, but... I don't like, think they're made the same way. It, it, well, yeah, it seems like... Well, the whole culture is, like, not really the same. And the thing about it, too, is that as much as, you know, the, the CSIing of of society like everybody knows so much more about forensic science and investigation and everything like that now including serial killers so maybe they but like i said have changed their methods like to make it harder for them to get caught because the thing about it is that like all the serial killers that were idiots all got caught like yeah. the ones that there's still ones out there but they're obviously not getting caught serial killers are a are are, are a basically a, a fucking what do you call it a sexual identity it's like a um that's their orientation murder and sex drives have been kind of put together in the same thing and i don't think there's as many of them as there used to be and i don't really think they're produced this by the same methods i don't think they're they're made the same anymore um because the world's changed a lot i think uh internet and social media have diffused a lot of the problems that caused serial killers to be created I think you kind of have to have isolated males who are fucked up uh, getting lost w within a world of their own fantasies with, without, with, like, uh, without any sexual outlets. Well, I and think, minimal interaction with yeah, other, other people, people that have like similar proclivities. Right. So they end up fucking being like Jeffrey Dahmer. Where if you look at Jeffrey Dahmer, he just kind of fucking devolved into his own fucking inner world of fucking perverse insanity you know fucking necrophilia and didn't want to be by he didn't want to be alone you know the internet would probably would have fucking been a good pressure release valve on a guy like that he probably would have thought about it but he probably never would have done it see and i kind of wonder about that because i know that some and you know i don't know the statistics on this because i know that there's some like maybe on the other side that have the perception of you know, oh, it's just, like, encouraging, like, bad behavior because it's, like, you know, if somebody that has, like, all these fucked up fantasies or something, they can find other people with that and they, like... Yeah, and, and they, they bond, kind of, they like... Friends and they And they're kind of, yeah. like, um, you know, maybe talking each other into, like, great... Which I guess that can happen, too. But I don't know. I kind of feel like... I think they end up like the Vore community. Yeah. Where they talk about it, they don't ever do it. Except for the one or two. But Except but the, the thing about it is that, like, they would probably have done it anyway. Like, even if they didn't. The, I mean, the I most think... extreme are going to, like, do the shit anyway. I, okay, I think if Jeffrey Dahmer to be born again in the modern era, I don't think he would have ever developed it into the into See, I, yeah, I kind of the agree with you on aren't it. there anymore. It's not the same. It's not the same. And anymore. see, I'm like, I'm always, I know you can't like ever run that experiment, but yeah. I'd always be interested to run that experiment. Like some serial killers, I just think were just like born monsters yeah. and like they probably would have, they might not have committed the same exact crimes in the same exact way, but they still would have been horrible people. If you looked at Dahmer and Gacy, their, their main problems, their main problem was, is that they were gay and they felt that they wouldn't be accepted. In a society. time when it wasn't really yeah, acceptable. They weren't being, they were, wasn't acceptable. So they had to hide it. All right. And then the hiding part of it fucking ended up, murder ended up being part of hiding it. And also power play, especially like with Gacy. Gacy was, nowadays if Gacy would be born again, he'd just been a leather daddy. He'd be down at the fucking fetish killer. Yeah, and it's like yeah. probably no one yeah. would say boo yeah. to him. Like, mm -hmm. 
I mean, like I said, it's hard to say because we can't run. Casey just wanted to type young boys have sex with them and beat them up, and then t- and call them sissies. You know, that's BDSM. Yeah, which, like yeah. I said, you can. He he could have found a guy who wanted to be right. Tied up you in, can yeah. find yeah. like consensual. Yeah, stuff, yeah. and like he can go to a damn nowadays. club, fucking wave to everybody else while he's doing it, and he can even dress up as a fucking clown. You know, it did it, it, it so. It, and everybody be like so the right. shit that he thought was taboo wasn't as taboo as he thought it was and it didn't drive him to the fucking levels of perversion and murder that it did. Holding secrets always makes it worse. See? And that was the whole thing, you know, fucking with, with Gacy and Dahmer is that they were trying to keep everything a secret. It just got worse and worse and worse. And uh, I and always trying to like, yeah, yeah, I always kind of feel like the problem is you're trying to project a, yeah. an image that isn't true. That yourself. isn't you. Yeah. Um, you know, to, for acceptability and yeah. that's, that never ends well. Yeah. And then the straight dudes that are killing things are similar type, similar. I think with them, though, it just what it boils down to is rejection. They can't do with rejection. Yeah, that's a big part of it. Yeah. Well, if you look at fucking the Green River Killer, what was his name? Gary Ridgeway. 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 Ridgeway, yeah. I mean, they're not much of a man there. I mean, he's just fucking pitiful, right? He was married, but it wasn't good enough for him. He he he, he wanted more women. He 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 wanted access to a lot of women. But the problem was, is he didn't want the woman there. He wanted the woman's dead body because he didn't want anybody looking at him. Yeah, you know, basically, he just wanted to masturbate with the woman's body. Which, like I said, I'm like, dude, they yeah. have sex dolls. Well, he he'd go back, you know, when they were rotten, and he would have sex with them. So he had fucking serious issues. Yeah, you could say that. <laughs> You're right, yeah. He had serious fucking issues. You could say but that. But it was fear of rejection. He didn't want women looking at him disapprovingly. So the best thing he'd do, in his mind, was to kill these women. And then he'd have total control over them. And they couldn't look at him. Right. So he could he could be comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah, and like I said, when you put it that way, it seems, like, really obvious. Yeah. And I think, like, a lot of, especially ones that have, like, that necrophile type yeah. of Yeah, because when they're tendency. there, they can disapprove of you. Right. When they're not like there. Like, you're not doing it right. Yeah, when they're <laughs> when they're not there, then it doesn't matter. Yeah. Really weird. Like, a lot a lot of evil has come out of the world because dudes were afraid that, like, a chick would laugh at them. Yeah, somewhere. yeah, 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 yeah. Crazy. Yeah. It's like, it's really not that big a deal. <laughs> Just calm down. Um, but yeah, so as I said, these murder cases are still open. So obviously, if, you know, if anybody knows anything about them, uh, to please contact the Palm Beach County Police Department. Uh, there were also on the Wikipedia page for the Boca Town Center Mall. They also noted, uh, some other more recent incidents. Now this one, uh, thankfully this one ended up with no one hurt and it's uh, like actually kind of funny, but this happened in October of 2019 and apparently there were like all these like quick popping sounds and everybody thought it was like an active shooter situation you know what i mean like so everybody was like freaking out um you know everybody in the mall did there was just like a huge panic and then the swat teams had to come and they did like you know grid search through the mall everything like that just evacuated everybody all that other kind of stuff so they cleared them all out and then they discovered that the popping noise had actually come from a janitor who had found a balloon in the food court and popped it like on his cart, uh. like or like a couple of balloons and just like popped them, yeah. and everybody like freaked the fuck out. <laughs> so they said the only person that was injured was somebody that you know during the panic like tripped and fell and like hurt themselves when they fell on the floor. But I was like, well, that's good that like nobody was hurt. But that was just kind of funny. Uh, however, in April of 2022, there was an actual shooting there. Um, no one was killed, thankfully, again, uh, but one person was shot in the leg. Um, but, uh, they just basically had to lock down the mall and, uh, shit like that. But, um, apparently, I don't really know what happened with that. All the Wikipedia page says is an active shooter threat was quickly dismissed and the incident was categorized as isolated. Yeah, just so, isolated. So I don't know if somebody isolated. just walked in and was like, woo, and like shot up and then left, or I don't know, what the, or they shot somebody in the leg and then left. I was like, that's a oh, weird man. thing to say. It's fucking crazy. That is pretty crazy. But yeah, so that was like the most recent thing that happened there. But this poor mall, man. Although I kind of feel like... Most malls had bad shit. That's what right? I was going to say. What, what was the one, I can't remember the one that, um, Dan Bell talked about one, which was like, I don't, I don't know if it's still yeah, open. Yeah, shot his ex-girlfriend while she was working. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 
She's and actually, one clothes, of them, huh? like a cleaning lady, got like yeah. murdered too. I think like yeah. somebody was trying to like steal her purse or something, and she yeah. fought back, and the dude shot and, her. Yeah, and then the cop came in and cop shot him. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I thought I remembered like. Wasn't was this the same incident where somebody just came in like in the department store and they just like stole some lame ass like a pair of jeans or some shit? Yeah, that's right. Got to a shootout. Trying and then to they got a shootout over a pair of fucking jeans. I'm like, really? Do you need Dude jeans that straight. bad? Dude wasn't thinking straight. He really wanted those jeans, I guess. I he mean, wouldn't, he wouldn't have done fucking 24 hours in jail for stealing those jeans. That's what I mean. Jesus they, Christ! They, just they'd give, they'd put it, they'd fucking court settle summons. down. You had to give him court summons and he'd go to court. Community service. Holy crap. I used to, like, when I worked in a mall, I worked in a, um, like, a record store. And I love that, like, they always, like, told us, it's like, oh, if you see somebody, like, stealing some shit, you go over there and confront them. I'm like, I am absolutely not doing yeah, that. Yeah. So you can fuck yourself right now. But, um, we had somebody steal, how many CDs did they steal? It was a bunch. Um, <laughs> they were just, like, putting them, like, underneath their, you know, shirts and down their pants and everything like that. And I guess, like, the manager sort of saw them and sort of, like, chased them out of the store. And for some reason, they went out of the store and then tried to bury all of them in the planter, like, that was, like, right outside the store. I'm like, okay? I was yeah. like, what the fuck was that all about? I thought the cops were coming. They stashing the evidence. They stashing the shit, like, kind of trying to bury them under the mulch or whatever. Yeah. I'm just like, okay, whatever, moron. But we did catch one guy. He was like a, uh, he was kind of like a teenager. He looked like kind of an upper middle class teenage boy or whatever. It looked like he was just probably stealing just to be cool or whatever. But he didn't uh, have any money. He got caught. He got caught and he got like pulled into the back and the manager was like reaming him a new asshole. He was crying. It was pretty funny. <laughs> manager reaming him a new asshole. Yeah, it, he did. Well, she did. Take it out of your ass. Yeah. She was she was okay. a little she was a little fat lady, okay. and she was just like man, she was reading him the riot act. Like I said, he was crying and everything. I went back there to like get my stuff, and I was like, hey. But so is that, <laughs> is that it on this case? Uh, yes, it is. Oh, okay. Yes, it is. Go ahead and shut it down now. Um, <laughs> Jeffy Art said, never realized I was risking my life just for the container store. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the container store is in this mall. I've actually never been in a container store. Is it what it sounds like? Is it like you just go in there and they have all different kinds of like container like Tupperware and shit like that because that sounds kind of neat but you know you don't poke oh my goodness hi there she's like trying to come up on a chair um but yeah all right so i guess we will we've been on for two hours uh, more or less and you know i got work tomorrow so i gotta get ready for bed and all that kind of stuff so thank you everybody for dropping by this evening and thank you for whoever recommended this topic because i probably wouldn't have got to it if you hadn't recommended it even though it's in florida i had never heard about it um so yeah we will be back on friday night for our sidetracks show having some drinks and like you know easing you guys into the weekend as we do uh so yeah hopefully you guys can come by and hang out with us on friday night thank you very much for coming by tonight thank you for super chats and all of that other stuff and we will see you again on Friday evening. Good night.